And welcome back. I'm Cynthia McFadden. We are bringing you uh, some of the highlights of this morning's testimony and try to put all the pieces together before we begin the live afternoon session of Court TV here. Matthew Rosenblum is here with me. Matthew, before we look at some of the cross-examination of this plainclothes cop, essentially on the stand to do what police officers are asked to do, preserve the scene. They're saying crime scene. I'm sure the defense were, rather it was called something else. Uh, but clearly when a police officer is involved in the death of an individual, the police are going to investigate and find out what happens, and they, and they say that they're going to preserve the crime scene. Have you ever tried to get them to change what they're calling it in terms well, of your... You, you can constantly uh, uh, battle and, and object to the terminology used by a prosecutor, but sometimes you call more attention to it uh, than by if you just ignored it. So if you say object to the use of the word crime scene, there was no crime committed, uh, uh, it might be worse. I've objected to the... Uh, calling of my client uh, a defendant mm -hmm. at some point, just to um, keep giving the jury uh, that message that no, this is Tom Jones. This is you know he may be a defendant, but I don't like the characterization we know, over and over and again. And it's really true because in so many ways the words we use suggest that that idea that someone's innocent until proven guilty is really not always the case. I mean we talk about a victim, we talk about uh, we talk about the defendant, which isn't necessarily a description of guilt, but it's certainly as someone who's been arraigned and brought to this stage of the game. Uh, we talk about the crime scene, which suggests that there was a crime committed. It's, it's worth watching, I guess. Exactly, and if you're going to condition, I mean, the judge uh, uh, pulled the nice maneuver here, something that I do often. I call the, uh, the members of the jury the judges, because they are the judges of the facts, and you had the judge do it here. You elevate that jury. You, you heighten their sense of importance, and they'll pay more attention. Um, so you, it, there are constant little battles going on because, because the lawyer who is in total control of his language and can use double-edged words and, and somehow shape the trial that way has an advantage over somebody who is uh, more careless with his verbiage. Or her. Or verbiage. her. Uh, but, you know, actually you pointed out something that I was really interested in. I've never heard the jurors referred to as the judges before and I noticed that Prosecutor Kim Worthy has now adopted the judges phrasing. He calls the, uh, all of these jurors in his courtroom the judges. Uh, are you other judges ready to go to lunch now, he frequently says. Uh, so you've heard it before and used it yourself. I haven't heard it uh, used by a judge before. I have used it in summation, uh, and I have constantly tried to elevate the importance of the jurors because to the guy or gal sitting next to me, there are no more important judges, including the one on the bench, than the ones who are going to decide the facts in the case. That's exactly right. We're going to go back into the courtroom now and show you some.